So uh, let us sort of take the you know up the ante a little bit okay, okay one more notch okay. and then I want to look at a very interesting problem okay. okay. So this is basically a problem of a cube okay. Okay. So first we started off with series and shunt. Yeah. Then we saw triangular circuits, we drew a diamond rhombus yeah, diamond and now you are moving on to I a cube. I am moving to 3D. Okay, okay. 3D. So I am saying each side of this cube mm -hmm. is a resistance. Okay. Okay. So let me number the nodes first. Okay. 1, 2, 3, <laughs> 4. That is one phase. One so it is interesting, this perspective, right? Because you are projecting on 2D. You can see it in two perspectives, a cube facing one way with 1, 2, 3, 4 being the front face or, an or another face being exactly. on the front side. <laughs> right? Right? So I am going to look at now 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes. Okay, that is another face, the, far the side. farther side of the this thing. Okay, And each, uh, so it is not a solid this thing, there is only a line between uh, any two nodes, Okay, any two vertices and each of them is a resistance R. Okay. okay, so this line equal resistance are all equal resistance. Okay. This is like this. Mm. Okay. okay, every line, every line in this cube is okay. a, and is a is a resistance. Mm. Okay. okay, and I want to determine what is the equivalent resistance between diagonally opposite points. Oh man! In this case, okay. it happens to be one and seven. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting problem. So, how do we go about this problem now? Oh, this is a lot harder. You yes. started off small and then now <laughs> yeah. you have ended with a bang. Yes. Okay. I, I think one more sort of a important thing for students is to know is that unless you solve the hard problems, the medium sized problems will not get comfortable, right? That's true. So, you always try to solve one level harder problems. I agree. Right? You have to go a little bit out of your comfort comfort zone. Exactly. To actually be comfortable with what is with what, what you, you need, need eventually, right? So we That's may never right. solve such a problem in our entire engineering, right? That's right. In real life. That's right. But it's just to get ourselves comfortable with our thought process and stuff like that, right? So let's hmm. discuss this. How do we solve this now? Okay. Let me see. So the things that we used in the past. So we use series parallel. Yeah. And I do see some series parallel elements, but nothing easy, nothing, nothing straightforward easy. because I can't just like the Wheatstone's bridge. It is not a simple series parallel exactly, combination right? for sure. Because if you look at node one, you have a current I. It splits as three currents. Exactly. I have connections between you know multiple nodes. Nodes. Right. So right? it splits as three currents. Mm. And what what do you do after that? Yes. Right? So it's correct. A, nothing. So series parallel correct. is not going to work. Is not going to work in this case. Then the other thing, last what you said was brute force. Yes. I cannot imagine that working because <laughs> I have what uh, 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 twelve variables. Exactly. Basically, I have twelve <laughs> resistors. Exactly. Twelve variables. So exactly. yeah. it's going to go crazy. Actually, that's a good point. So how many resistors are there? Let's keep that. Okay. How many? Uh, okay. So I have between one and two, two and three, three and four. 4 yes. and 1. That's so, four. I have 2 faces. 2 faces, so each 4. 4 edges. So, 4. Uh, 4. Plus 4. 4, yeah. 8. So, I have 4 plus 4. Okay. And then between ah, 2 and connecting 6. Connecting the 2. 3 and 7. Yes. 1 and 5, 4 and 8. Perfect. So, that is another 4. Correct. I have a total of 12 resistors. 12 resistors. Okay. So, let us keep this in mind. Okay. Okay. So, uh, brute forcing is going to go crazy. Yeah. Very quickly. Exactly. Right? This, so, it might be possible to solve this numerically with with they a simulator some, yeah. or something. But because what I will then need to do, just like you said, to find out the resistance, I need to find out in the earlier case V V by I1 plus I2. Here I need to find V by I1 plus I2 plus I3 I or something. Exactly. Three, so three this currents. This is I1, this is I2, ah. and this is I3. <laughs> and the number of, if I were solving it brute force, the number of KVL equations that I'll have exactly. to write. Exactly. KCL right. equations. Just KCL. out of hand, right? Out so it's hand. not possible. So. Yes. That is why I wanted to discuss this now. Yes. Right. So, brute force is out of the question. Yes. Uh, simple series parallel is out of the question. Not, um, the other one we tried was equipotential. Yes. Right? Equipotential and… Uh, symmetry. Symmetry. Right? Yes. So, can you, can you, mm. can we look at that? Actually, the symmetry makes sense because I can clearly see you have chosen points 1 and 7. Yes. The rest of the cube seems… so. What I am imagining is, uh, it is like you know, passing 
you know connecting to passing a, it's perfectly it's a symmetric solid diagonal yeah, so you connect a string mm. between that and just chop it you chop. see a symmetric thing okay I'll, I'll see a symmetric so one way correct. to visualize this is you look at any path from 1 mm -hmm. going to 7 okay it goes through 2 okay this is one path mm so it goes through three resistors yes okay then i have another path which is 1 to 2 to 6 so and to then six. to 7 mm three resistors again mm okay i can go 1 to 4 4 to 3 yes 3 again i have 1 to 5 to 8 yes right and <laughs> you can uh, then you can even go uh, i'm running out of colors now okay so yellow if so i can go 1 to 4 to 8 and then here right yes so you see any path you take it has to go through three resistors right yes so in and the incoming current yes has to split interesting it seems to be splitting three ways in three ways at every node at every because node. every node is a corner yes it it seems to be connected to three resistors correct right, right? exactly so the, it is the incoming current has to split as three currents i1 i2 i3 and every path yes seems to be similar yes and then eventually it combines to form i again i again exactly right so you're right so the current i has to eventually come out of this node also that's right right and where is it coming from it's coming from these mm. nodes so this i will call uh, i1 i2 i3 i4 i i5 and i6 mm. okay okay so i is equal to i know kcl at node 1 I one plus I two plus I three. I is also equal to I four plus I five plus I six. Okay. Okay. So we have we have come up to here now. So now, what do you think we can do? Can you go back to that Wheatstone's bridge? Yes. Can you go back to the page where you solve by symmetry? Yes. Because I think what we said. Uh, ah, I think here. that was that was the yes. one. So we made the symmetry argument, and then we wrote on this equation. Yes, I one equal to I two, right? We are you are talking about this. Yes. Right equation. Yes. So we said each of the currents is half. Half. Can we say each of the currents is one third here? Exactly. Right. So is there? Uh, let's look at it the other way. Do you think there is any argument for the current to split in any other ratio? It has to no. be I by three, I by three, and I by three. That's right. right? So therefore, you can safely say, I one equal to I two equal to I three equals I by three. Okay. Mm. So now we will go back and do the same, make the same argument that we did to the Wheatstone's network. Node, if you look at the drop between node one and node two, mm -hmm. it is going to be I by three into R. Yes. Likewise, between node one and four, it is I by three into R. node 1 and 5 is also i by 3 into r so that tells us if the drops are the same and one point has the same potential the other point also has to have the same potential so immediately we can recognize that nodes 2 4 and 5 are equipotential mm uh 2 3 4 or 2 4 5 2 3 and 4 right uh no no from 1 uh -huh. it's going to 3 yes three. yes correct 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 it's going to 4 2 4 and 2 4 5 perfect two, correct 2 4 and 5 that's correct 2 4 right? 5 likewise just look at node 7 yes currents are coming from node 3 node 6 and node 8 8 correct right correct now that again the currents have to be i by 3 yes. because that's the only way that they can all combine back correct come in right so if that were the case then you can make the same argument that 3 6 and 8 are also yes equi equi potential okay yes so what we have done now is we have simply reduced this uh how many eight node network yes to a bunch of equi potential points okay so yes. what we will do is we are going to just go ahead and redraw this network maybe i can just stick to this page it's not that hard right so this is node 
which is the source then i have node 7 yes then i have nodes 2 4 and 5 here yes all these are equipotential 2 4 and 5 yes then i have nodes 3 6 and 8 mm. right yes because uh, uh, you know they are they are another set of they are different potential by the way they are not the same as 2 4 and 5 that's true they yes. are equipotential equal to some other potential but they are all different mm -hmm. from this 2 4 and 5 correct okay so now we need to redraw 12 resistors mm. connecting these points okay so we have a resistor between 1 and 2 okay so yes okay then we have a resistor between 1 and 4 again 1 and 4 is here okay mm -hmm. and then we have a resistor between maybe i'll label them r12 r14 so that just to keep track mm -hmm. right and there's a resistor between 1 and 5 yes okay so r15 every resistor is the same i'm just labeling them so that we cover all the resistors okay now I have to go between similarly we will finish on the other side mm -hmm. okay there is a resistor between 3 and 7 yes or 3 7 there is a resistor between 8 and 7 or 8 7 and there is a resistor between uh, 6 and 7 6 and right? 7 exactly yes. right or 6 7 so mm. we have covered 3 6 8 2 4 5 yes. right and yeah now i have so i have covered how many resistors 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are still six more resistors to cover yes okay so now what do i have i have between 2 and 6 mm -hmm. i have one resistor here r 2 6 mm -hmm. okay then i have a resistor uh, between uh, what do I have between 5 and 6? 5 and 6, yes. Right? R, 5, 6. Then I have a resistor uh, between uh, what other uh, points? 4 and 8. 4 and 8. R, 4, 8. Right? Okay. And, and R, 4, 3? R, 4, 3. Is that? Right? Yes. R 4 3 okay. okay how many so 1 2 3 4 yes then R 5 8 did we get R 5 8 no there uh, is a vertex from 5, 5 to 8. 8 right yes so therefore R 5 8 yes so how many 1 2 3 4 5 we, we need, need one, one more resistor right so what is that resistor Do we have uh, 3 and 7 is it 5 to 3 no 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 3 and 7 are equal yeah, the, yeah no, that is here that is here right so we need uh, uh, did we get uh, 2 to uh, 2 to 3 r 2 3 do we have r 2 3 we don't have we don't i have. think that's the missing resistor r 2 3 okay so we have <laughs> 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10, 11, 12. So, all 12 resistors between yes. node 1 and 7 have been covered. Yes. Every resistor is equal to R, right? Now, it is you know easy to see that this guy is just a parallel combination of 3 resistors and therefore, this is going to be equal to R by 3. Yes. Then, between this 2, 4, 5 and 3, 6, 8, bunch 6 resistors in parallel, right? Yes. And so therefore, R by 6. R by 6. And finally, between this 3, 6, 8 and 7, another 3 resistors in parallel are by 3. Okay. Right? So, this is node 1 and this is 7. This is this 2, 4, 5. Okay. And 3, 6, 8. Yes. And therefore, R equivalent here is just 2 R by 3 plus R by 6 and therefore we get uh, 5 r by 6 5 r yes. by 6 as the answer perfect amazing amazing right i would never have guessed <laughs> this 
So this is so this is one problem where I mean I would say we couldn't even have made an estimate of where the equivalent yes. answer lies, right? Because it's That's not right. easy. Where there's no series, nothing that actually shows up, right? But we yes. are able to identify use symmetry to our our advantage. Yes, and do this. So. I think uh, I should also warn the students just because I have written R12, R14, it doesn't mean you can substitute any value there and that's right. get it, right? It's right. valid only for equipotential e uh, equal, resistors, equal resistors, right? And equipotential has to hold. This numbering was done just to keep count. Yes. So that we Correct. cover all the 12 resistors, right? Correct. So that's all it was. Correct. So uh, I think with that we have covered, I would say the basic techniques of solving equivalent resistance problems. That's I right. think beyond this, you know, you will not encounter normally, 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 right. right? I so would expect we have covered most of the cases yeah. that we will encounter that we will encounter. And therefore, um, I think this should sort of be uh, sufficient to cover the problems, not just in this course, in the future courses as well. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think with that, we'll stop here. And we'll get back to some uh, interesting theory. Absolutely. In the next Superb. Lecture. Superb. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.